Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, so, yeah, a bunch of times Peter accidentally, you know, knocks, he hits something a little too hard. And he manages to delete Brian's picture. And Hill tells Fury they're not going to evacuate. And I think Beck is the one who says you have to keep fighting away from metal or it'll become unstoppable. Fury chews out Peter. And let's see. Okay, so we're caught up. And, you know, Mysterio kind of relates to, to Peter, and, you know, he he's like, some part of me wants you to, you know, go and be safe, but I do also feel like we need you on this. And you have all summer to kill Bray. And, you know, they have to keep them occupied for several hours. Opera, and, like, just yeah, and the you know, and he's like, you know, do you know how expensive opera tickets are? It's going to be a great four out, four hours, and and the the other teacher's like, again, not my fault. Just keep me, keep me, come count me out. I have nothing to do with this. Just yeah, and and you know. <laughs> After P you know, Peter so badly wants, you know, to be close with MJ and and now this time she's the one who comes to him and she's like, Do you wanna split on on some of those glasses? We can sit next to each other. And like the the you know, in the in the earpiece, like the the yeah, Fury's like, Parker, Parker, are you in position? And he's like, no. No, no to what? No to sharing glasses or no to sitting next to you? And, and he's like, no, no, I didn't mean no to that. <laughs> and it's such a great, because, yeah, that's the, you know, it's, it's, it's such a, we've seen it in so many movies. But it's also, it rings true because it is, you know, you accidentally blurt out the wrong thing when your crush says something that you really want to, you know, you're, you're just, you're so nervous and you're so surprised that they're suggesting this or that thing. So you accidentally say, yeah. And I, I, I'd also say the, it's, it's a really good, um, you know, we have several scenes where, like, we have this thing of the, the earpiece, you know, and then we, yeah, when, when we realize that Mysterio is communicating with others through earpieces, you know, it, it follows that sort of theme we've, we've seen before, that that's how. And, excuse me, I mean, they're at the very end, or no... Excuse me. Actually, yeah, the the it's not it's not that Fury is directing. Excuse me, Talos completely by earpiece because he has to call him normally at the end. So yeah. Anyway, and Brad flips off Peter, and MJ goes after Peter, which of course leads you know. And then then Betty is like, ah, oh, let's that's that's such a great idea. Let's let's sneak out of here before we just and yeah and Ned is like you know and, and Betty can tell that there's a, that's, you know Ned's there's there's something wrong and Ned's like you know I'm not comfortable around this many people he's thinking if I say that to her she's gonna maybe she's gonna agree to go back inside because at the opera there's not very really many people as they already noticed but no, it's okay, because Betty has the perfect solution for that. And they're, you know, cut, and we see them in, in this, like, what's it called? Like a, a wheel, you know, whatever the thing. And just, perfect! That's definitely not going to be incredibly dangerous and force Peter to, to really, yeah. And they... 
hose down the lava creature. Yeah, yeah, they, they try to use water on the lava creature. But it grows bigger and yeah, and, and Betty is stuck on the yeah. Let's see. And and you know, Beck is like, whatever happens, I'm glad I met you and then yeah, it it looks like he's going to sacrifice himself and it looks like maybe he'll be dead. Maybe he won't survive this attack. But, you know, the the fire is gone and and it's, you know, once we realize the the after the yeah, once you realize that everything with Mr. was indeed just you know, no, none of it was real. Yeah, he was never in any danger. It was always just completely, but it looks really heroic. And Fury says he wants to hire Beck and uh, let's see Peter and Beck and Peter are both, like, they're basically still wearing their suits and they're in this bar drinking. How many lemon? What was it he said? How yeah? How many lemonades have you had, or something, something like that? How how many? You know, like again, like Iron Man three. How many bowls of, of candy? And yeah, yeah. And and yeah, and and, and Beck is like, can you, you know, you know, Peter puts them on and and like. They, they look a little kind of dorky on you. Maybe they come in like contact lens form. And Peter gives Edith to Mysterio to be the next Iron Man because, you know, the, the quote, yeah, makes him think that it's not that he himself is supposed to be the next Iron Man. It's that he's supposed to identify the next Iron Man. And. Yeah, and, and the, you know, MJ, I think you have a 50-50 shot. I mean, you're still kind of awkward, you know. And, yeah, and, and Peter leaves. And we see that Beck was surrounded by holograms. And... Yeah, and Beck is real not to be any kind of superhero or the like. He used to work for Tony Stark. He was the one who developed Barf. And and we're told, you know, he has these different, he has like a crew of people. One who writes like story stuff and... Well, I've got, yeah, just various, and, you know, he says, you know, he, yeah, he, he repeats that phrase, you know, he said to Peter, never apologize for being the smartest guy in the room, and then the, yeah, he said, you know, people won't listen to you, even if you're the smartest guy in the room, you know, and it's this thing, basically, like, he thinks that everybody should listen to him, that they should do what he thinks they should do, without, yeah, and, and then the, the thing of, like, you know, Tony fired him for being unstable, and, you know, yeah, to, to this gr group of people who, who work for him, you know, that sounds completely, ugh, how could Tony possibly say, it? it's just ridiculous, but then, when you think about the, the things he is doing, yeah, it, he does appear to be unstable. And, yeah, and he says, you know, but no one will listen. And, yeah, and this is the place where, you know, it's witchcraft. Welcome to the new Dark Ages. And, yeah, the, the, I, I really like, you know, MJ was like, you know, oh, so where were you? And, I said, yeah, it's, you know, 
and and he turns to walk away and he's like no you know what? I'm gonna and he turns and he you know he's about to like knock on her door or something something and she opens the door because she's also like no nah, I can't I, I gotta talk to him again and and he's like so I'll meet you out here in ten minutes five minutes and just yeah they're they're really really cute together and the the yeah and they're on the bridge and and MJ's like you know they used to execute people here they're just and yeah and Prague Prague is looking very empty which is probably I mean it's late at night so it it makes sense but I don't know I still I still feel like I, I guess I, I maybe expected the, the Prague scenes to have more Prague Gideons. Proglodytes. Proctologists. And let's see. Yeah, and, and it's like, were you only watching me closely to see if I were Spider Man? Yeah, why else would I be? And just, yeah. And MJ found one of the, what's it called, the, the hologram, yeah. And, yeah, and, and the, you know, and we see the Beck and his crew rehearsing and you know, Beck himself wasn't told about the the that one thing to to you know because because the other guy was like it's it's fine you know we'll have enough it'll, it'll work he doesn't think of it as evidence but Beck does and Mysterio talks about you know this has to be an Avengers level threat. And yeah, we have maybe three dozen drones from Edith. I quite like the detail that as many as Beck sends at Peter, which is eventually all of them, he always keeps just like two really close to himself. And, and only at the very, very end does he have them fire as well. Because, you know, it says, well, you're in the blast radius. And yeah. And, yeah, and, and he says, you know, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to have to kill Peter. And you know, he tells the Will William guy, you know, his blood is going to be on your hands. I don't know if that guy, you know, because I watched the, the DVD special features of the first Iron Man movie a million times over, I know that that guy helped work on the first Iron Man movie. I don't know if he's still been working on the MCU at, at all, but it's definitely the same guy. The same guy, or they found one who looks and sounds exactly like him. But yeah, I, I don't know if he's been working on all these movies in between. Then, you know, oh, if you want to reprise the role, but yeah. And Right, and, and yeah, Ned sees MJ and Peter, Spider-Man, and let's see. Yeah, and, and Beck attacks Peter with a drone and hologram, and I really, yeah, I, I already mentioned, I really love the, the sequence, the, the illusion sequence where Mysterio goes after Peter and it's like where Peter is, what exactly is happening, you know, yeah, these, these kinds of things are in constant flux. I really love that. The, you know, there's that one part where MJ falls, which, I mean, that's a, I'm almost kind of surprised it took them two movies to get two, two solo movies to get there 
you know, I, which is, that's, that's also what it took in the, in the Amazing Spider-Man continuity, you know, yeah, of course, you know, Peter's girlfriend is going to, to fall off at, at all, yeah, I really love how they used it, though, but, yeah, all these things, and, and the visuals, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I expected from, you know, it's, that's, yeah, that's how it is in the comic, and how it, yeah, and, you know, Spider-Man has to fight copies of himself, it also felt somewhat like Doctor Strange at times, and, you know, yeah, and, and Mr. says, I, I am the truth, which is, and yeah, it, it is like very kind of, yeah, you know, it, it's commenting on fake news. You know, the the villain is literally someone who wants to convince people to believe in something that is just demonstrably not true. And, you know, since it's a, a big budget movie, they're, the, the way they're doing it is to stage it properly rather than just, you know, blatantly lie. Now, and I, the, the zombie tone, like, that was really, really creepy. Zombie Iron Man, you know, first the, the grave, and then he climbs up. Yeah, that was very effective. And... I really like it looked it seriously looked like Fury had stopped Beck and it's like you know Beck's people are going after your friends so we need to know who to protect who knows about this you know and he's like um Ned and MJ and and, and Ned may have told his girlfriend Betty and then it goes back and it's Mysterio again he's like you are so gullible and just yeah, and I also like. I think one of the last things he says to Peter is, "You're a, you're a good man. What a weakness to have, or something like that." As yeah. And. But that's also just like in the comics. You know, you'll Peter will think he's gotten out of the illusion, but he's still there's still one level more to yeah. And that's it. You know, fly home from London for the school trips. And let's see. And the you know the, the Netherlands bit with the them in prison and it's so incredibly stereotypical. They're all so so ridiculously polite and all just yeah. I yeah, I, I didn't I didn't know I I really like the whole what was it? Night monkey, and then he said, you know, maybe it's a spider monkey, you know, because Ned tries to keep Peter's secret. So he said, no, 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 this is not Spider Man. It's a, it's a knockoff. They call him the the night monkey. I read about this, and he calls Happy so he was Jet, and the right, yeah, I noted that they did a good job of keeping photos out of the trailers and. The, Okay, Mysterio has, you know, in person, how, how do I know for sure it's you? Tell me something that only you would know about me. Okay, when we went to Germany, you, you watched a movie. Now, I didn't, I couldn't see the title, but I could tell from how much it cost that it had to be an adult movie. You didn't know how I found out. And Peter's like, okay, okay, you know, that's, that's good enough. I, I believe you. And the, the thing, you know, he tries to do the, the stitches. He says, just, just relax. And he snaps, I can't relax. I miss Tony. And the... This, this whole, you know, I, I really like Happy's sort of pep talk. And how he said, you know, you, you, you're not Tony. But Tony wasn't Tony a lot of the time. You know, he couldn't live up to... The, the kind of thing he set up either. 
excuse me, I guess Spider-Man didn't really, excuse me, try to quit in this movie, but he did, like, he, I, I guess the only thing he really said was that he wasn't going to be the new Iron Man, he wasn't going to be an Avenger, but he didn't really quit, so this is the first time that we have two Spider-Man solo movies in a row where Spider-Man never actually quits being Spider-Man. In the live action, I don't know about other. Now, and Flash's live stream helps. You know, Spider-Man. That's how they found out, find out where exactly they are. I d I did generally think that that was kind of sweet, and then Flash is like, "Spider-Man follows me." It is, yeah. And and Peter goes and builds. A suit in in the jet and and happy's like you know what i'll take care of the music and he puts on back in black so we just yeah you know it's it's iron man one but in instead of building a suit building a suit while being in prison he's building a new suit excuse me where he's in a Yeah, where you know he's he's stuck in a dangerous situation, and and MJ goes and you know Brad, don't take stop take, taking pictures of people in the bathroom. Let's see, and yeah, and Beck is like ready to kill. Ned, Betty, and MJ. <laughs> and we see the Spider-Man suit be made like the Iron Man suit, but you know, in the back of the jet instead of in the the what's it called the, the basement area, which does also make you know it makes sense that originally you know back in two thousand eight he could only you know he he can make it in the the in in one of his Houses or apartment, you know, yeah, skyscrapers or whatever. But by this point, and it's also, you know, it's it's a Spider-Man suit. It's not as, you know, but he can make it in the back of one of the jets. And they get off the bus and they're on the bridge. And and Peter tells Happy, we're gonna have a serious conversation about you and my aunt. And Peter knows he has to get inside the illusion. And Beck is trying to kill Peter. I quite like Peter electrifies all the, the drones and he'll use an RPG on a drone that was facing Fury. I also like Fury calling BS on the, the story that that Beck was was telling him. And the, you know, in in the in the Amazing Spider-Man two, the the web can also like conduct electricity or what's the word? Yeah, some something like that. And. Yeah, if Beck says he'll he'll kill the, the kids himself, send all the drones to attack Peter, and he dodges a bunch. And like MJ grabs a mace, and let's see. Yeah, and and they you know they kind of cause a sound distraction to to get past, and and Happy tosses like a thing. It kind of looks like a shell, and he's like, how does Cap do it? And... Let's see... Yeah, and this is where I noted this absolutely amazing climax, and Mysterio really couldn't have been done justice to before. Very, very recently. You know, maybe it could have been made three years ago. You know, but... You don't. You can't go much further back before it really couldn't have. 
you know. Net trees and Peter stops. Yeah, Peter stops back as the, the last couple of drawings are right outside Peter's friends and See, what does that say? Peter fights through illusions using the. What's that say? Yeah, uh, you know, he uses the Peter tingle, the spidey sense. And. Oh, right, yeah, that's what I wrote. That it's, it reminded me somewhat of Doctor Strange. And all the drones are gone, Beck is wounded, and he tries to shoot Peter, but doesn't get him because Peter sees through the clever disguise. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, Beck says people need to believe and nowadays they'll believe in anything which I do think is a very very great commentary on the modern world this is you know we live in an age where it's incredible how how clearly certain things at least can be proven and yet we also live in a, an age where a lot of people will believe things that either cannot be proven or are clearly disproven. So, and MJ and Peter hug, and then MJ kisses Peter, and he gives her the dolly egg, and it's broken, and he's like, and, and at the same time they say, because of the murder. And MJ says she wasn't just watching Peter because she thought she, he was Spider Man. They're, they're cute together. I I wouldn't say they're as cute as the Amazing Spider-Man, but it's also... I don't expect anything to match that. You know, it, they're, they're, def, they're very, very cute, and they're cute enough. And... Let's see. What's that say? Fury is happy, but Fury can't help his nature. And Betty, if Betty and Ed broke up, they grew apart, but they learned, oh, you're so wise, and just, yeah. And Peter asks, have, oh, wait. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, asks Happy and May if they're dating, and they very much disagree on that. And Peter takes a picture of himself, and as he swings, Spider-Man, and MJ texts, don't swing and text, you know, don't drive. Don't, don't text and swing, don't, like, don't text and drive. And we reach the, let's see, the, the mid-credits scene where Peter lands MJ and then, you know, the the Mysterio, you know, be, yeah, Mysterio, uh, yeah, apparently like that that William guy, the the guy who's, you know, that that Iron Monger yelled at, you know, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps, you know, that guy apparently cut together some some audio and video, making it look like Spider Man. Excuse me was the one who sent out the drones and, yeah, attacked London with all these drones. And there's all, you know, and he's and Peter's outed as being Spider-Man. And we have J.K. Simmons reprising his role as J. Jonah Jameson. And 
you know, the Daily Bugle dot net, which is that's that's so good. And like people have been saying, they're never gonna be able to cast anyone as good as as J.K. Simmons. And I, I, they, they probably wouldn't be able to. I <laughs> hypothetically, if one were to spend fifty years trying to perfectly genetically modify someone to look and sound exactly right as J. Jonah Jameson, they probably wouldn't be able to. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to get any closer than J.K. Simmons is. So I'm really glad he's doing that. And, uh, you know, and the, the and you, trivia points out this is the first time that's happened, actually. The, you know, every every single other role, it's been recast. Yeah, so, so that's, that is very cool. Now, I like how we first see the drones when one attacks Brad and then later... Are hugely important. I mean, we already said that. And you know, I, I wondered if the when they wrote Civil War, when they wrote Barf, if they were already then planning on using Mysterio because that does it. It makes a lot of sense. He he's all about these holograms, and that movie ultimately didn't need the the yeah it. it it could have been done with, like, exposition if they wanted to. They they probably just wanted a, a cooler way to to do it. But yeah, right. post credit scene with Thanos the Skrull posing as have, having been posing as Fury, having been going to do that, and Fury on vacation. At first, it looks like he's on the beach, but then see that's like a hologram, and he's actually on a scroll ship. And I actually finally managed to reach the end of so that was around 32 minutes, although um, some of that was not in, you know, it, the, yeah, the, it cut off the video, which actually means I have no idea what time to put for this next, well, let's see, I guess I'm just, hmm. Let's see. Hmm. It's very tempting to end this stream and just open another. And I get, yeah, that's what I'm going to do.